Okay, why don't we get started? Hello. Hello, everybody. Everyone here at Immaculata and the rest of you way out there. Um, so we're here to discuss the demise of Iliad. And, um, I, you know, everybody has their own feelings about that. I didn't have good feelings about that, but um, it's really good. I mean, it was a good thing that it's, I'm happy that it's gone. So the screen that we have above us, that we have in front of us right now, um, if you, it looks just like the old World Share page that you've all seen before, but um, it does say, it does say Tapasa. So if you were to log in to your World Screen page at this point, and you're not a, a Tapasa user, you won't see that. So this is all that extra money you paid for Iliad is under that Tapasa link. So, um, and the, the cost for the Tapasa is the same as you were paying for Iliad. Um, and you need to remember that because there are things currently in Tapasa that are missing, that are not functioning in Iliad. But know that because we're paying for that Iliad portion, it will get there. It's just they have to build it onto that. Um, why does it keep clicking like that? Okay. Okay. So since I've never done this before, we're going to stumble along a little bit, but um, eventually we'll get there. What I wanted to um, discuss initially, what I'd like to know initially is how, um, Dominic, I know you're an early adopter right now. Are there any other early adopters? Okay, good. Um, I mean, not good, but that's good. And then is everyone here currently using Iliad? You're just using WorldShare, not Iliad. Okay, so for you, it would be a question, and for those of you who are only work using WorldShare, you get to see what Tapasa, if you wanted to upgrade to Tapasa, what that would give you. Um, you know, the big things in, in Iliad, I think, that we liked was the ability to upload right out of our databases, and that doesn't change at all. This, that, In fact, I think the functionality of that in Tapasa is a lot easier than it was in Iliad. So we did all of that ourselves. We didn't need our vendors to get involved in that. We did all of that. Um, okay, so some of you are going to upgrade maybe, and others have to move. Um, what I'm going to try to do today, because um, I'm not, this is not a training session. I'm not OCLC, and I can't do that. Um, but one of the things that I will do today is give you sort of an overview of what a workflow looks like right now. And then I would like it if you asked me questions and then I could specifically go to those places and to pass it to answer those. Okay. I'm going to give you a brief rundown of the pluses and minuses. And we'll do it from I In my office, I do all the lending and I do all the administration. And Sister Alice, and I told her the meeting was at 1.30, so she'll be down at 1.30. She does all the borrowing. Um, so administratively, the advantages in Tapasa were huge, probably bigger than anything else. Number one, forms are so easy to, to create, to fix, to edit. You, it's all right there. No more SQL nonsense, no more coding, none of that. This is a piece of cake to, to fix. And you can do it on the spot. So if you're, you, you have a, a request and it doesn't seem like it's providing you quite the right answer, it's just easy to go back and check the form, make sure that you have the fields in there that you want, and you fix it right on the fly. It's very, very easy. So for me, that was the biggest plus in Tapasa. Um, the other thing is that Access is now not Windows-based anymore. Um, so you, it's up in the cloud. If When you're doing other um, 
functions in the library, which many of you do, um, you can access this from any computer, from anywhere. You can even work from home. Um, so that's really nice and um, makes it easier. Um, no, you don't have to worry about routing requests anymore. You know, all that trying to figure out and, and all your customization. You know, I don't have that tab anymore. Um, but you don't have to worry about that anymore either. So the function of, of Tapasa is just, it's just easy. It's just, it makes sense. And you don't have to stop and leave it to go into your customization manager to fix this or fix that or look, try looking for something in there. It was always a big pain in the neck as far as I was concerned. So no more routing. The other thing is um, once you're, you are ready to go live with Tapasa, your patrons will still have 30 days in which to access their Iliad account as a read only. So that's really nice. You know, you know, they um, so they don't get shut off right away. So they can and you know they always need more time than they I mean, they always need more time. But they get 30 days. We put that on our web page and we had absolutely not one complaint about that. It worked out really, really well. Um, so those are the pluses. The minuses right now, I, I think, are going to be temporary. I think these are things that um, OCLC didn't count on. They're not heavy users. I don't think most of them really understood uh, how Iliad actually functioned because they didn't create Iliad. Um, so right currently the things that drive me crazy is articles that are that we that come in for us through Iliad libraries will not those patrons will not get a notification if it if it's sourced from an Iliad library. I don't I don't know the techie stuff behind that, but they know that and that will be fixed. Um, Uh, yeah, you're going to get stuck with that nine-digit ILL number instead of the five-digit transaction number. You know, that's, I'm getting used to it, but at first I thought, ugh, but anyway. Um, in the patron's file, which I will show you at some point, um, they can't see their whole transaction, their whole request anymore. So when you have to cancel something, they see... The, say a journal and a title that and, a, and an article title that they asked for, but that's it. They don't see a volume issue, pages, nothing. So that's hopefully going to be fixed at some point. But I think right now we're stumbling with that because canceling canceling these things. Um, now they say you canceled it, but why and wh how else do I do this and we don't even know what they're looking for. Like, some, like most of the time, we say, no, we have it. So if they come in, I'll say, I'll show you where it is. It's on the shelf. But I don't have the volume issue, date, page, nothing, because it's gone. And I don't, I'm not ready to say you have to keep a, a separate file for all of that stuff. So hopefully that will get fixed also. So that's administrative. Um, borrowing. The maneuverability on your page is so fluid. It's just, it's all right there. You're not going all over the place. So, and that makes it all the work so much faster. It, we, we may, we may upgrade ourselves into um, oblivion. <laughs> I think at some point you, you got to protect your job here. It's much faster for us, for sure. It's definitely faster. Um, we use this opportunity uh, to now authenticate um, automatically. So we created an authentication system while we had this opportunity. Um, other schools also did. I thought we were the only ones who didn't do that, that were doing everything manually. Um, but we did that. So patrons love that because they don't have to log in twice. So that worked out for us. OCLC is still having some issues about so many places coming in at once to authentic, who want to authenticate. And so because everybody's using LDAP or you know, Shibboleth or all the different ones, trying to set up those templates has been a little bit more than they expected. So that, was a, that held us up almost three months. So, um, and that's both from our end and from their end. But hopefully... We used LDAP, so they should know how to do that now because um, that's working fine now. Um, now, all of your articles are going to go by article exchange, um, article request. 
but you're not going to have that stupid little you tiny URL to worry about. It downloads it, but because you're to pass it and not WorldShare ILL, it's going to get shit set automatically set as if it was an Odyssey article. How do you authenticate? Currently, our Iliad system authenticates versus our Sierra system. So we authenticate with LDAP, and that's the only thing I can say about that because I totally don't understand this whole authentication technical aspect of that. But um, OCLC can authenticate just about everything. They'll they'll they gave us in fact somewhere. Um, let's see. You can authenticate with IP addresses, with patterned IDs, with patron ID files with referring URLs, user ID and password, with cookies, open Athens, Shibboleth, um, LDAP, HTTPSs, personal users, and, and you can also do a guest access. Whatever you want to do, they'll, they'll make that happen. Does that answer the chat question? Okay. Um, so that was borrowing advantage. Okay, um, so you have no forward, and so when you get your article exchange piece in, all you have to do is say receive, and it's gone. You don't have to deal with it anymore. So that's really nice too. Um, and understand, one thing I found out about doing this project is that every single person has a different, every single library has a different workflow. So what might excite me is probably something you guys have been doing all along and you don't get why I'm so excited about this and vice versa. Um, and the nice thing about that is working in that very first cohort with the five other libraries, I that's where I found out I could do things I didn't know I could do. Um, and I might have been able to do it in Iliad, but if you, you all remember when we got Iliad, we had one big implementation day when John came to, to get us all in there, and then they were gone in terms of training. Um, so I think we sort of let things sort of sit there because nobody was coming in to train us on this stuff, you know, we just, but this, it's, you know, you hear about this stuff, but it's so easy to dig it out and, and make it work. You don't need help to do that. Um, so one of the things, I don't know if you all did, is we did not do text notifications, and yet I know that most of the patrons prefer text notification over email. This allows them to set that up very, very easily in their own file, um, and they can have one or the other or both, whatever they want to do, so that's really good. The minus in the borrowing at this time, and I don't think this, this first one is going to get fixed, is this patron name search. If you want to go back and look for a, a request that you place for your patron, you cannot search it by name. And, um, you know, they keep saying, you know, it's an ALA privacy issue and all of that. And to me, it's, but it's our student. I'm the one who placed the request. I'm the one that helped them place the request. What do you mean I'm not allowed to know who he is? And we're working on it, but that's right now. And that is, has become a stumbling block. It really has. There is no history in Tapasa. So that little history thing you used to hit when you have a problem with one of your requests that tells you every single person that touched that, if you have work studies, and what day that got touched and when it went to this queue or that queue. Oh yeah, because you have a lot of queues. We don't have queues now. But all of that is not there. Nobody is happy with that. Everybody wants that back. It will come back. It may, I think what they're saying is once we get everybody on board, then they can make those kind of changes. But this has turned out to be one of the biggest complaints in the new Tapasa system, so it will get fixed. Um, the due date does not populate on the bookstrap. I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense. They said they will fix that. Uh, cancellation reasons, there's no drop-down box for that. And 
people are really upset about that. So right now the workaround is that you can customize all your emails. So you can do cancellation emails if you're canceling because we, you hold the item, if you're canceling because it's in another language, you can custom create very easily those emails. But there needs to be a drop down box where you can just click it and get on. And where it says other, we ought to be able to fill it out and it, it, that is not there yet. Lending. Again, maneuverability is so much easier and it's so much faster. And the minus is the same thing for, since I do lending, okay, um, the history, not having that history is, is a big pain in the neck. Um, for me, another big minus is the loss of my add-ons. I don't know if you all put add-ons into your system. Add-ons were not Atlas's product, if you remember. Other universities created these add-ons and then we attached them to Iliad. So the functions in add-ons were important to us, but they weren't, they didn't inherit that. OCLC didn't inherit that from, uh, from Atlas. So they have committed once everybody's in there, to go ahead and put those, build those functions into the, this platform, and they will do that. But for me, to have to leave and go to another browser, to go into Google, if some citation, you know, because you know some of these citations are so crazy, um, is a, yeah, I hate to say it's a pain in the neck, because I just told you everything else is so much easier, so it doesn't really take much time to do that, but it was nice to just to click that button and have it all there. Um, so, th so that, that's a problem for me. Again, there are fewer reasons for no if you can't fill it. You don't have that same drop-down box we had in Iliad, um, and you can't explain the other. So hopefully that will get um, fixed when you have um, reasons why you can't fill something. Um, book holdings. If you are asked for a book, I can click on my catalog. I can click into my holdings easily right from this slip, but um, you have to cut and paste the call number and nobody likes that either. So that should populate automatically. They will work on that also. So that's the overview of the pluses and minuses and now I'll show you. So um, this is what your page looks like. Got a lending request since that's where I am. Um, so can you supply? I mean, it's all right here. Um, so say we go into copies, and there are your copies. You open it up, um, and your whole form is here. Every, everything you want is right there. So what I do in my workflow, um, I do print my requests. I know others don't want to do that, but I, I like having my print so I can go in the stacks and pull it, especially for my print. And at this point, all you would do is say, Um, I mark it as considering right here and then print now I add it to the print queue and you just go through you know in the morning and you add them all into that and the nice thing about this is you can you can batch all the print and the loans it's all the same form so you just put them all and then you print them all out together um, and then what in like in this case um, this is a journal so I click right on here Oh, it's broken. Okay. Well, I'm not going to click on there because I found the one that doesn't work. That's, that's an internal thing for us. That's not um, OCLC. So let's look at another one. Okay. So once I've said considering and, and then when I go to work it, I hit that. My link to full text is in my catalog. Again, it doesn't go to your A to Z list, which was my add-on, but they will fix that. Um, so for now, that's where I'm going. And then I can go right from, from there. Um, well, it went, it went to, let me go find something where it would say, Oh, everything is full text. See, well, I'm looking for something that isn't. It would say, interlibrary loan, a click on that takes you to your login window. Um, for the, oh, no, wait a minute. I'm doing this wrong. I'm not the patron. I'm, I'm the supplier. Um, yeah, so you open up your PDF. 
you save it, and then you go back. And I can't. Um, So once you do that, if I had clicked on it and downloaded it, then the article exchange, that, you, that tiny URL, oh, and then I would hit article exchange right here. You would download it again. The tiny URL would go right here, and then it would say ship. And it gives you, it says ship, and it also says preview. So you could see the preview, so you can make sure you have the right, which is great for work studies. Um, and then you just go up here and say yes, and it's gone. So it you don't ever leave this page. You just and it's gone. For those for those that are electronic. Now, if you're scanning, you know that's a different story. But um, but still, it's just yes. It's nothing else. The only time it, it would change is and I don't. Oh, I do have new books. So yes. You have a job. Yes, I say it, I, when I click on article exchange, give me uh, an article and, uh, and another drop box coming up. Yeah. And, I click, and I click the on the I, I click on the drop box and after I say yes and it's gone. So it's not shipping. That's why I'm. I'm no, you're right. It might not say ship. I don't remember a Dropbox there, though. It just has that URL there, and then I just hit the yes. I don't do anything else. Yeah. But it does have two little things that pop up here. Um, one is preview, and the other is... Oh, I'm sorry. Dominique was saying that um, it doesn't say ship over here, and she has a Dropbox, but Dominique is also one of the early ad adopters, so I'm not... I know I don't have a Dropbox, but that's not to say you didn't set it up differently. I know in WorldShare, um, when you click the um, OCLC article exchange, it prompts for an upload of a document. And then you have to drop the file. Um, so I know. That oh, that's what she's. Yes, it's the dropping. You're right. Yeah, you do have to retrieve. I'm sorry. Yes, Claire is saying that you do have to retrieve it from where you saved it, and then you drop it. And that's exactly. That's what we're talking about. Thank you. Okay. I told you we we're going to stumble. Um, but but that's that's it. And and for a book. Um, over here. So the book, you go to the catalog, and I said, you know, you're going to cut and paste this, um, the URL, um, the call number right here. And then if you're ready to ship, you will print your shipping labels if you're not using IDS um, and your book strap. And then you just say yes, and that's done. So, and then at the bottom is your print. Print queue with your shipping labels, your requests, and your book straps, and both your um, your article requests and your book requests will look exactly the same. So they're all going to print out the same thing. You'll just have to separate them out. That's what I do anyway. The only problem I have right now in terms of printing is I hate the book strap, and I'm very very specifics about that. The book strap, I would imagine, is to be used for books, and it has everything on it. It has the journal name, the journal title, the volume issue, ISSN number, and it's all these fields are on the book strap. So um, I don't know if you guys went to the OCLC forum at the Chemical Heritage Society, but that day um, 
in later, I guess before or after that meeting, Aaron Duncan and Drew Bordas, who's the president, vice president of management of customer operations for OCLC, came to see me and said, okay, so what do you like? What do you don't like? Tell me what's going on. And I said, I hate the book strap. So I showed them the nice, clean Iliad book strap that has just the information you need. And I showed them there's a mess of a book strap that they provided for us. And he said, oh, that's really ugly. Um, so I've put it into the enhancement request to let's get rid of these fields because I can't imagine why, who's still shipping articles, you know, it's just like, but, and then don't call it a bookstrap, but um, I hate the bookstrap, but everything else works very, very nicely in, in terms of this. Um, so, yes. I have a question. You said you put the phone number in the label after you could How do you know that book is on the shelf? I mean, if the catalog says it's on the shelf, but then you find that it's not, what would you do instead? Okay, the question is, what would we do uh, if I cut and pasted the call number here, what would I do if it wasn't actually on the shelf, if, if the book? Well, this is also my poll sheet, so I will take this, when I print this out, into the stacks to pull it. So at this point, I've made no commitment to ship this. So once I have it and it's checked out, then I hit the, the print shipping label, print book, hit yes, and that. Yes, when you, yes. Remember when I put that into here, yeah, every time, so you mark it as considering print now and it goes into that same queue as the articles went, yeah. And there are also the advanced workflows you can turn on. You can turn it on so you have a retrieving list Right. She's saying that there are, are lots of other options um, in an advanced settings that you can create too. We've done some of those. We haven't done all of them. I think some of them are really good depending on the volume that you have. I think if you're just pulling in a few a day or something, and for us that goes up and down throughout the, um, you, you could, and, but the nice thing about that is you can change that, turn that on and off anytime you want also. So this is what the two forms look like. We don't do the purchasing request um, or anything else. Let me show you what the user portal looks like. So here's my portal. This is what your patron will see once they log in. So up the top, account details, and they can, um, edit this, so name, address, everything you need to have. We need that phone number if down here, communication preferences, they say they want both emails and, te and text messages. So they can do it, but they can change that also. We require that they use their Immaculata email. I don't want to deal with other people's email and whether they'll take whole documents or not. We just do it that way. Um, and you can actually put all that information into their forms. It's very, very easy to do that. Um, then here are some requests that I had done that were canceled. Now see what I mean when I told you it doesn't give the complete citation? And that's a problem, I think. So um, hopefully that, that will work. Um, they will fix that. But this is essentially what that form looks like, what the student will see. It is, to this. It doesn't tell you much more than that. The other thing, because I did, I should have done another one in, in advance of, of today, what I should have done was do another request. It gives the student here at the status the countdown time, the 30 days or the five views, so they know exactly how long they can have that article. And it, it does, every day it counts it down. So there's no excuse, like what happened to my article? If they looked, that's what they would have seen. And I, I do like that. I think that's, that's really, we have had no complaints, none whatsoever from our, our patrons having to shift over. It seemed to be seamless. Everybody seems to, we've gotten compliments, but no complaints. Um, so as of now, when you cancel it, do they, they don't get any explanation in the email? The question is, as of now, when we cancel, do they not do they do they not get do they get 
notice, right? Yeah. Yeah, right now the, um, I'm trying to think now, hold on. Um, if they cancel, they get an email from us. Yes, we we customized the email with different reasons for cancellations, and, and I'll I'll show you those emails where where that happens. So yeah, they will get one and say you know because we we hold it because you know for all kinds of reasons because it's a duplicate you know all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so this is the patron. Now, this is all that stuff happens in service configuration. So we're going to go to World this year, ILL. So this is, I think you've probably used this, um, even if you're Iliad, in terms of setting up some of your, um, your data in there. So borrower data, um, I didn't have to create this. This was already in here for us. So, um, I, you know, we had to do things like, you know, take out um, Odyssey, you know, that kind of stuff. But all of this information was already here. OCLC already had that. Same thing with lender data. That was all here. Um, this direct request profiles is something we also didn't do in Iliad. And I'm not sure if everybody else did that or not. But we use this as an opportunity to create direct requests. So are the rest of you using direct requests? Okay, so direct requests basically, we limited it only to books for the time being until we get used to it. And it's actually not working for us right now. So we're trying to figure out, there's one field that is an OCLC, I think we're on day three of this, is trying to find what field isn't populating correctly. But direct request is if someone on a Friday night is doing their research and finds they need a book, and they create a request for that book, Depending on the parameters that you set, that book request will go out immediately. It doesn't have to wait for Monday. So it's all unmediated requests. So we did this to keep it very simple for now for books that are local or within the state and that are free. So it's as simple as that. And really, most of the books are that. So we don't have to mediate those. We don't have to touch them. We don't have to look at them. They should just go out. Somewhere in our record, I mean, somewhere in that list that we looked at before, we should see that, and I haven't been seeing that, and Sister Alice has been filling requests from Cabrini and Newman and, you know, Del Val and all of that, and that shouldn't be. It should, they should have just gone. So um, it works for everybody else, so it's something about my settings that are not correct, but even OCLC hasn't figured out what's wrong with my settings. So that's not working right now, but I think it's a really um, nice option to use and the you know a lot of the other schools that I work with in my cohort were doing this even for article requests um, or they'll do it I know one of the big things was for, for article requests for just for faculty just to get them moving and get them out really quickly um, so I don't know, with article requests for me, there's, it always seems like there's citation issues, there's always issues. So, but if it doesn't fill, if it doesn't match the criteria you sent for it to go automatically, then it does go into your mediated line, you know, lineup. So it's not like it's going to get lost, it will still go there. So we did do these library, these direct request profiles. I call them, they're called direct loans. Um, so just books, we're not paying for them, um, we didn't, okay, route to review file, so, you know, yes, if it's a, if it's a duplicate, we want to see that, um, if it's helped by our institution, yeah, I want to see that, because we need to tell them we have it here, um, number, of, minimum number in a lender string, that sounds weird to have one, but if you have five, if you do the minimum, which is five, which is what we're used to using, but there's only one school in the area, it'll buy, it'll it'll go out because it's not meeting that criteria. So if I know Westchester has it, then uh, that's all I need. So let's just put the one there. And if they are not going to send it to us, then it'll go back into the mediation and back into the lineup. So you don't lose anything by that. Oh, 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 how do I? It should be pinging you, but I don't know if it is. Okay, you might have to go back up and answer a couple of questions. 
Okay, where do we, I'm sorry, we forgot, we, we, I lost the chat. So Lehigh University, where do you get the URL from? I'm not sure I remember what URL we were talking about. For the what? That URL is, is, is populated. It's, it's, I don't have to do that, it just pops up. Yeah, so that, that automatically populates. Sorry, sorry I lost you. Um, let's see, what else? Okay, so that, that's how direct request is supposed to work. I'm hoping that when we come back from our break on Tuesday, it'll be working. So, um, patron request work forms. So, there's your article request. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shrink this up again for a minute. Um, I love doing this because there's so much, there's so many things in here, and you don't, need, we don't need. And this is my, my form, so the actual form is a lot longer, and it's really nice because you have the ability to X out any of the fields that you don't want to use. Um, you can retitle them, you can create new boxes, um, you can add notes, you can do all kinds of things on those forms. So I really, you know, no SQL. I mean, it's like, it's so simple. You use actual language. Uh, I mean, regular language. Um, so this to me was, was, a, was a really, really, um, where did, okay, so as you can see, I wanted to put a note on the form because you know they're never going to read it, so you put it everywhere. But I wanted them to check our catalog before submitting, but there didn't seem to be one. And then I realized, well, this was blank, and it's called section header, but you know, which sounds like a name, but it isn't. Will the preview do it? Okay, so that's the form that the student sees, that the patron sees. So this little box, you know, actually ends up being really nice and vivid on, on, the, um, on the form. So it's, it's short, sweet, but it's everything that you need. And if you find that you need more, you add more fields to it. The fields are already there. You do, I just removed them all. Um, and I found that very, very easy to do. And as we've been going through this, sometimes I thought, you know, maybe we do need to know, have this, or maybe that's all it is. It's just a click and you're back in there again. You don't have to go to the customization manager to do that. So we did, so we chose to do three. Our um, third one is a book chapter. So you can do a separate one for dissertations if you want. You can do whatever else you, you want to do or for, for multimedia materials or something. I try to discouraged doing that, and so many people don't send that anyway. But you create all the other forms that you want. That's very easy. Um, print settings. So I added our logo. Um, that was really easy to do. Um, oh, you want to see the book strap? Let me see. Hopefully they'll... Okay, so here's the book strap, and right now it doesn't look that bad because a lot of things aren't filled in, but see, see this whole business with volume, issue, article, author, article, title for the book strap, um, ISSN, so that's just stupid, and you can't remove it. Um, I did, we do 60-day loans with no renewals, and in Iliad I was able to put that right behind the due date, um, and in this one I couldn't, so they know they have to rework this book strap to be better, and they will. Okay. So for what, the book yes. strap is not editable at all? You have no control over that? Is the book strap editable? Edit, I hate that word, editable. Can the book strap be edited at all? Um, yes. No, wait a minute. Let me go back to the strap itself. Let's see, uh, I don't know why, well, 
I was able to put the note in. Yeah, that's the only thing that's editable. And it will not have a patron name on it either. Um, again, we're not allowed to know who borrowed it. So um, the due date for lending does fill in. It doesn't for borrowing, but it does for lending. So um, I was able to do that, and I guess I did that by adding this note down here. But that's as, so anything that you want to add to it would have to be in the note field. Yeah. Patron settings. So patron settings, we decide what they can and cannot do. Um, we did not require approval for new ILL patrons because we use the LDAMP authentication, so that wasn't necessary. We are allowing our patrons to renew online, and we allow them to cancel online. Um, and that's really, that's the only thing that I didn't worry about anything else at this point. So that's patron. And then notifications. Um, this is, this is where you're going to do most of your work, believe it or not. So borrowing library to a patron, but this is kind of nice. So you can send emails or text messages for any of these reasons. Um, now the request canceled confirmation isn't giving us the reasons in there. So that's not working as well as it should, and they know that. Uh, but everything else, I mean, for any other reason, you would send an automatic email or text message. Now down here, just to skip over, including all the um, overdue notices, in here I created custom emails, so I have a, um, an email for cancellation for duplication or cancellation that we hold the title. So that's how we're doing it right now. And so when you're in that request, there at the top where you say considering, let's go back, let's see if I can go back to, okay, I don't need that, don't need that, where was I? Okay. Let's go back in here. Going to borrowing. Here is where you would click on that email and then you would choose your templates. So that's where it pulls the templates from. So it's, a, it's not a big deal. It would still be nice to have it all done. But, and, and you can configure that any way you want to do it in regular English. So that's where that is. Where was I now? When we were in service config. OK, I'm sorry if I'm jumping all over the place. Um, so that's where all the, the um, notifications are. And the U open URL resolvers, um, I handed all that over to my serials people, and they just pl plugged the um, URL um, for our account into all their vendor administrative pages. And that took them like an hour or so to do. So that's all there, and that's all nice and clean. Um, so that's. That's the overview. That's kind of what it looks like. So do you have questions? Can I expand on anything? Claire? Um, for those of us who use Global Share, can you point to any particular big difference between World Share and Tipasa? Because um, as far as I can tell, it all looks almost exactly the same, except the name changed. Well, I, I think. Uh, I don't know. I didn't use WorldShare <laughs> before. I think probably the big thing is the fact that that we're pulling. I mean, this is all coming out of our databases. Also, you don't do you use the open URLs in your databases? So if everyone, so if they're using a search, isn't that? I thought that was just an Iliad thing. No, regular. You just deflated my whole argument for why we should do this. I mean, when our students are in our databases and it's not full text and they click on interlibrary loan, that form is already populated. It's already done. 
in here. So that's a big reason, and, and you pay extra money for that. So what else? Um, Dominique, did, what else is different? Do you know? I'm trying to think offhand. I feel like one of the only people. Well, and, and the other thing is, uh, if you're doing article exchange, you're still sending an email, correct? Yeah, like we don't we don't even need the review. We when they click the ILL button for us, it generates an email to us, and then we have to hand it to. Right, so we don't do that. So it just goes. We don't have to. It goes just like Odyssey did. It's just that they use article exchange, so they're using the same terminology. Um, gosh, I wish I would have researched that. Better. Um, we're, we're getting a one-sided conversation for everybody. You just tell them that I was asking the difference between um, the world share and the other stuff. Yeah, Claire asked what the difference is between regular world share and Tapasa, and I don't. I mean, other than the open URLs in the databases and the fact that um, the article exchange pieces get sent automatically without an email. I'm not sure, but then again, I didn't use WorldShare, so I'm, I'm not sure either. I, there has to be some significant changes to justify the price difference, I would think, but I'm not quite, I, I think I should get back to you on that. Yeah, and again, I think everybody uses that differently. Um, it is, it is, Wait, I just, did I skip over that on the, uh, is that under, no, you know, I was looking at, we're talking about um, copyright settings in here, and if that works. Yep, there we are. So I don't know if that works differently in Iliad than it does, I mean, in WorldShare as it does in, in Tapasa. I, I, I don't know. But that's a good question for me to pose as an answer, which I could follow up with if I contact OCLC and say, okay, give me, give me your, your selling point. Um, I, I think, I think um, in terms of working the workflow, I think that's a, a, a the reasons we just stated are, but the other big issues are the fact that there's this, um, well, I mean, you can do, yeah, the whole cloud business you can do also. I mean, you can use it from any computer, right? You don't have to download it onto, I don't know. I'm going to find out because now I want to know why I'm paying so much more money. So um, we'll, we'll figure it out. I will get back to everyone with an answer on that. Um, get through the stuff here I I don't know I don't know any other questions Barbara what happened to document delivery, what happened to document delivery? nothing happened to document document delivery I just don't do it so I don't have it here I don't care you spoiled them, is what you're doing. Yeah, okay, it's people like you. All right. Um, document delivery, I removed because we don't do it, but it certainly worked. Yeah, I don't know what the answer is. Oh, I hear. Yes. Yeah, so I, I don't, I just don't do it. But it's totally doable, yeah. And in fact, um, they spent a, quite a bit of time in our training on that, and we didn't go to that training session. But that ended up being a very long session. So, I, And I think that very large universities and law schools, and they use, a, they very heavy users of document delivery. Um, we just don't do it. I just feel like, like we're giving you all these links, go look it up. I mean, you're, you know, but that's just me. But it's there. Has anyone used to pass it with DocLine? No, we're not a DocLine user. And I don't remember that question 
um, coming up in training at all. But then again, I don't think. I think one of the things we read about in the webinar or heard in one of the webinars that we went to was that it doesn't work with DocLine yet. Linda says it doesn't work with DocLine yet. They were looking for people for the cohorts that do not use Rapid ILL or DocLine because they strictly wanted just that. So I think they're working on it. Okay. I would imagine that they're working on it, but it doesn't look like that. that and I have to say, none of the, the, the universities in our cohort would have used DocLine. Um, so it never came up because it wouldn't have applied to us. But I would imagine... I would imagine there are an awful lot of medical schools and medical libraries and all those who would want that, so nursing. So I, I would imagine that's something. There's a lot on the table for them um, that have to be, that, for which they have to create templates and bring in. Um, they told me, when they called me last summer, and I said, well, when is all this happening? And they were hoping to get everybody in within the next year or two. Now, I don't know if that's still their timeline, which for me means that all of those those fixes might be you know another year or so away, um, but at least for the most part they've given us workarounds until that could be fixed, and none of those workarounds are bad, especially because this is so much faster and easier to begin with that the extra time to take it is not that big a deal. Okay, so we have another chat question. Do you? Do you use Tapasa? Well, I don't use Rapid ILL, and as Linda said earlier, that um, OCLC has not yet um, brought ILL, uh, Rapid ILL or DocLine into this, but they will. Um, and before we close, yes, I will recap the biggest pluses and minuses, except I have to add a minus because <laughs> I'm not sure that I understand exactly what what's better about this. I know what's better about this than Iliad, but I didn't know what's better about this than regular world share. So um, okay, so going to the Iliad library, I scan so let me have something in print for lending. I scan it for record into Odyssey. Yes. And then I crop and edit it and then I send it. How do you do it? So in this, the question is, how do you scan um, in, in Tapasa? Um, basically the same way. Well, the way I scanned before is I scan it, I save it um, to my machine, to my computer, and then just pull it up out of there and send it. That, my function has, changed, has not changed at all in terms of scanning. It's the same exact way I did before. Do you just save it to a folder? I do. I have, a, I have an art, well, you know, back in the day it was called Article Exchange, and even though we weren't using Article Exchange anymore because we were doing Odyssey, I, mine has always been called Article Exchange, and now we're back to Article Exchange again. So that's the folder that's on my computer, so that's where I save it to. I have a very old book scanner and the software that started it was horrible, and so we'd have to convert all the articles to Odyssey and then scan them all and pop it in Adobe. And then we just recently set it up where we can scan directly into Odyssey. So this is kind of Oh. Well, we're talking about scanning problems and different software. Um, I got rid of the software that came with my scanner and just used Adobe as, as my scanning tool. So it goes right into the folder and there's, there's no cropping, there's no, there's no cut pasting, there's nothing. It's just easy. Yeah, that's what I that's what I've been doing. Um, we use Cersei Dynamics for a catalog. We would we need to go entirely over to OCLC in order to use Tapasa. We use Cersei Dynamics for our catalog. Um, I don't really know what what you mean. What would we need to go entirely over to OCLC? We didn't do anything. We they linked to our. They did ask us what our catalog was and our OPAC was, and we told them, and that's where it goes. So we didn't have to do anything else. That was seamless. So I'm not quite sure what that, what you mean by that question. I think they think it's an entirely new cataloging platform where I think it's an integration, like, you know, like it's a cloud software versus uh, installed software. 
We did nothing. It just links directly to our Circe um, Dynex system. What I miss is the add-on that was the Z3950. That's what I always use, and that populated that field, and I think most people did. So because that was an add-on, it wasn't part of, of what Atlas created, they didn't inherit that. So that's why I'm cutting and pasting right now, but it does link directly into Circe Dynex for us. Um, yeah, so no, it does. It will link to Circe, no problem. Bill. You mentioned um, a year or so when everybody comes in, you expand on everybody. Is that all Iliad users? Bill wants to know. All your Iliad and World Share users? When I said that it takes a year to two years is what they told me. And they told me this back last summer, so we're almost a year now, um, that everybody will be in. Yeah, we're talking about Iliad. So all Iliad, Iliad's gonna go away. So all Iliad users, they would expect with, again, this was probably last June when we, I talked to them, within a year or two, they were hoping to get all Iliad users in. I wonder if we should be doing some talking Um, as, we did with Bill. as we did, Bill wants to know maybe we should do some consortial bargaining. Um, well, I think, I suspect that, I talked to Tony Melville yesterday, um, he's the one who did the consortial pricing for us at the time. I would expect that they would say that whatever our current rate is, was based on that consortial bargaining and that's what we're keeping. So if you were, if you were part of the consortium and your price is going to stay the same, if you weren't part of the consortium and you're paying a little bit more, that price is going to stay the same. So I, I don't see anything different there, I would think. Um, you know, the one nice thing is when you do move over, they, they have been so it's been a learning curve for them because some of the questions and some of the problems and issues that we've thrown at them really surprised them they, because they weren't Iliad users. You know, they didn't really understand. Um, but boy, I tell you, they've been so patient and so willing to fix it all that um, it really, I mean, Dominique, do you think it's been, it's been pretty easy, right? Well, I think they worked with yeah. number of information on the form that I think you had is uh, you don't have this, you know, you just have a line, you click on the thing and come to the workers group but you don't have to do but so um that's why it was a, a, a little bit complicated to know what to, where to click at the beginning. And the second thing was also the printing because uh, in Iliad you print at the beginning. You know, when you request a new, you, you, it's the, the last function you do. And uh, in uh, Kipasa, you have to, when you are doing process, a new request, you have to think about the printing. And that's why at the beginning I didn't understand why I could not print afterwards, because you go to the left side of your form and there's no printing queue. And I, you know, this is kind of, so that's why I have a lot of issues with it. You know, with the workflow by itself, but I think uh, a lot of you know that's all issues I have, and uh, um, you know, and um, so I do a little bit differently. I don't use the bootstrap. I do use a label, and they have all the information on the label. With the, so and it's not as uh, you know, get you know uh, filled with the other information you don't use. So that's a pretty okay. good thing to do. And uh, so I don't know, there are minor differences with uh, what we have. But we started a little bit later. So 
So I think you really don't have the same issues that you had. Yeah. Well, Dominique is talking from Ursinus, and she's also an early adopter. Um, and I think her, you know, she also ha is saying that she had several issues in the, in the training and in the implementation of this. And I, I think that um, some of the things that, that, that she brought up are ones that, you know, weren't issues for me, but maybe I was doing them differently to begin with, you know. Um, but I think, they, I think we both agree that they've been pretty responsive to working and they do hold your hand a lot. It's constant feedback and are you good and are, you know, can you go on? I haven't heard from you in two days, like what's going, you know, that, if there's been a problem and so, and even now I have been graduated out of implementation. I can't contact all my friends over there anymore. i am now been released to OCLC support and, but even there, there's a tier, I, I'm, I have to put in OCLC support tier seven, which is the TAPASA tier. So certain people in OCLC support now support TAPASA. So now when I've had these, like this issue with this direct request profile that seems to not be working, I'm working with Kelsey in OCLC support whose only job is to handle um, TAPASA people. And, but I can't get back to my team. I've been cut off because now it's your turn, so they can't deal with us forever. By the way, Tapasa, stupidest name ever. Can I just say, I just really, we were, they called it WorldShare Prime as, as a working document. That's what we were calling it. So everybody said, well, we're we supposed to call this WorldShare Prime, and it just, nobody liked it. And they said, well, we'll do it, we'll have a contest. And will we do this? So we were all waiting for the contest. Well, the contest was among OCLC employees, not us that were actually going to work this. Somebody's telling you exactly the word. Well, all right, Susan. Now, I, I, this is. I'm going to give you a different answer because. Uh, we were told by OCLC that it was, and by the way, it was the best of a bunch of really stupid answers. Um, but it was, it's an Algerian trading post in, in, a, in a region called Tapasa. And so they thought that was great because we're trading stuff. And I'm like, well, who would know that? But, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> it was, we were so excited about the contest and then they did it. Have you heard if Tapasa has any issues working with Sierra? I don't know what Sierra is. Now, Innovative, I know, it is, I, I think they have really, I think they have touched on every single product that libraries are using, and I don't think that's a problem at all. I think they know more about what's out there. And yeah, everything is supposed to work really well with, with everything else, so I don't think that's a problem. All right, so here are all these other people who knew what this meant. <laughs> um, <laughs> no shit. Well, what we did, I'll show you what we did. We said forget Tapasa and we're IU share. See, it's like because we're IU, so you get to play on words, IU, and we share. I know. So that's who we are. And and I did find that most people in our cohort, cohort nobody's using Tapasa. So, you know, within, and, and they're fine with that. So, um, and their materials weren't, um, their communication materials that they would provide really said nothing about Tapasa. It, it, it was just dumb stuff. So I didn't use any of it anyway. But um, everyone in my cohort, nobody's calling it Tapasa. They're all personalizing, or they're just calling it world share. You know, they're going to stick with that. They all lost the prime part of it, but um, it sounded like we were working on stakes or something, but um, so that's where, where it all is. Any other questions? More chat? Uh, print queue. Did I show you a print queue? I think I did. Printing labels. Um, so you can do six labels to a sheet. Um, you can do more than that. I, you know, you can include on your labels by checking that 
you know, I always do the library mail, return service requested, so you can you can do that. Um, we did. Do you have um, the same issue I have with well sharing where if somebody has a address that's like five or six lines long, it doesn't fit in the label and it'll just cut it off. That has that has been a, a big complaint, and it's worse. And one of the reasons that happens, by the way, is because Iliad people don't know how to fill this out. So Iliad people are not putting their information into WorldShare. They're putting it in, into Iliad, their, their forms. So now, as a WorldShare user, when you pull that, it's not formatted in the same way. So it gets all kind of weird. Um, once everybody's in WorldShare, though, they're filling out all the same fields in the same way, and so all the addresses should be better. So for right now, because we're discovering that that's, we never noticed that before because we weren't on that receiving end before. So right now they're saying, you know, it, it is hard to, you can't edit that, what other people have put in. But as everyone's coming into WorldShare, that should fix itself. Um, so, yeah, and that's the same thing where, Again, if, if half of the schools are Iliad schools, um, their notification function doesn't work. It doesn't translate into WorldShare. So that's why they're not getting, our patrons aren't getting notifications if the article's coming from an Iliad school. And there isn't anything they can do about that right now until we all end up on one system. Do you send them a notification? We do. You can see where it came from so that you know that you have to do that? Or? Uh -huh. well, Linda's asking, um, since the Iliad schools don't automate this notification that it was sent, how do we know that? Um, so Sister Alice, you do the, the, the borrowing. So if something comes in from an Iliad school, right, it's not fixed yet. So that's supposed to be fixed, I think, in April. Uh, so sometime it should be fixed. Right, but then how do we know that it didn't go through? We just know because they told us that. Yeah, we just know. And also because we know that when people go into their accounts, they find the article. So we know that they're there. Oh. When we have a note on our website saying, check your account every once in a while for notifications on there. Yeah, if I take you to our, so we ha we did create a whole big page now with all our links to it. So we are saying, right now we're calling them, I now know what the reason is, but for a while we didn't know. We knew it was intermittent. Well, it's intermittent because it's Iliad. So we did put this up and say, please just check your account regularly just to make sure it's there, and that worked out fine. Um, and I'll, I'll use this, you know, as reminders to just please go check, you know, the, the list of journals, please check the catalog um, and, and all of that. But we didn't have an entire page before, but it was a good way to introduce everybody to um, IU Share, and um, it works for us. So, any other questions? Barbara. All right. From the technical point of view, okay, um, how difficult was it to get everything on board before you could actually start using it? Barbara wants to know, from a technical point of view, how hard was it or how easy was it to get to a place where it, we could actually start using it? Um, hmm. I don't know. I think it's like birth labor, like you forget all the pains when you're <laughs> past it all. <laughs> because I'm thinking it wasn't really, it wasn't really difficult. But then, I mean, here's my notebook. I mean, I have this huge notebook of notes and all of this. Um, and there were days where it got kind of hairy, you know. And, and part of that was them. I mean, it wasn't just me because it was right in the beginning. And so we would ask questions and they wouldn't know how to answer. And then I'm sort of stuck, you know. Um, so I'm not, let's go, let's start from here. I am not techie. I'm not. I mean, I, I learned techiness a little bit through Iliad, because I think Iliad required you to be more techy. So the techiness came from Iliad, but that didn't translate at all into what WorldShare requires. So I think I was impatient. I think that the delays, I think I was angry 
and impatient and fed up with our IT department in terms of our authentication. But I think if you take the authentication portion out of it, no, it was easy. It real, I mean, it just took some time. I mean, I started September 1st. I was doing all my lending in November. So that didn't take long at all. That was, that was a piece of cake. Um, then the authentication came into it. So be, before we could do the borrowing. So that got things kind of delayed. Now, I think it's easy. I really do. Now, again, it was easy because as an early adopter, we have a whole team behind us. I don't know what that's going to look like for people as they come in. And that was, one of the, that was probably the biggest reason I agreed to be an early adopter. If I have to do this, I want as much hand-holding as I can. But I don't think I need it as much as I thought I did. I, I think I know that I didn't need the kind of hand-holding that I thought I was going to need. I absolutely did not. So it was not hard. And the student, no, nothing ever stopped. Do you know what I mean? Like it never affected our patrons whatsoever. Um, the only time we thought that it would is at the point that you pulled the plug. And then you find that the plug actually gets pulled 30 days after you're already in Tapasa. Because only in read only, but they can still access their stuff then. So no, it was it was easy. It was I would say it was easy. And I know I've talked to a bunch of you about doing like, oh my God, we're gonna do this, you know. And that's the reason that, you know I called Claire and I said, you know, why don't we just talk about this? Because it's not. I, I think at the end of the day, my workflow is much faster. It's more accurate. Um, I think the patrons like not having to log in twice. They have to log into, you know, our library system and or into our databases. Then they got to log into um, Iliad. And they don't have to do that anymore. I think they don't have to fill out registration forms anymore. Um, nothing. So I think in that regard, I think it's all cleaner, nicer. Is it as pretty as Iliad? No, it's not. It doesn't have pretty little icons and it, you know, doesn't have the nice little tabs. It's not pretty, but it functions much better, I think it does. Bill, you look skeptical. No. No? Okay. Oh, I don't know. You're just okay. Any other questions? They don't have to set up an account. They don't have to do all the registration that they did in Iliad. So is that because you already know because they're authenticated through? Yes. So the question is, so the student, the patron doesn't have to set up an account and doesn't, no, the patron, um, uh, the patron goes here and actually there, oh, but I'm already, okay, and that's their login. So they're going to have the same login that they did for, you know, if they're in your databases or wherever, and then that's it. And so the only thing that they will get to change is the community. Well, I don't even think this is editable here. I think that came from that. I think the only thing that they get to change is here, to change their password and change email and phone numbers. Everything else is there. This, this might be a bit techy, but um, right now we're considering moving over to open for all okay. Authentication. Yeah. Does that make this super easy too? I don't know a whole lot about Open Athens except that we'll, they do support Open Athens, and I know our director has been talking about Open Athens. So you know we may have to make a switch at some point. Also, I mean I don't uh, I don't even know what it is, but I know that there's a, that seems to get bandied around a lot. I think is it EBSCO's came out here and talked to us, and they kept talking to us about. Open Athens, so I don't, I don't know, but it is on the list of things that they support. Yes, yep. Okay, statistics. Um, all right, let's get out of this. Let's get out of this. Go back to World Share. So if we go back to our original page, we have usage statistics right here. Oh, okay. I don't know if I can remember this. Remember that. And oh, 
can't remember. So it's the same ones that they always had in um, in World Share. I don't think their reports are as pretty. I had really pretty reports in Iliad with my charts and colors, and it was really nice. I don't think they're quite as pretty as there, but um, they have those. They have assessment tools are here. So I did not produce a whole lot of reports in Iliad. My director doesn't require it. So I'm not the best person to answer questions about reports and statistics and such. But I was told in the training that it won't look the same, but all the statistics and more are in WorldShare. Yes. Um, in Iliad, there was the custom search option where you could actually, you know, build a search that would result in a report that you could export. That still exists in Tapasa as a function? Um, I don't understand the question because I didn't do it, so I'm not even sure how to rephrase it uh, for, for the people that aren't here. So you're asking, in Iliad, you could create a custom, custom search. search. And the results of that search could be exported to Excel or whatever. Okay, and the results of that search could be exported. Um, you know, I don't know. Claire, does that sound like something you can do in WorldShare? Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a bunch of different reports that I use um, in WorldShare. In fact, at the last ILL meeting, mid fourth coming, um, the last ILL meeting, we are actually talking about those assessment tools and the different kinds of reports. Okay, there. so he, there is an um, export there is thing. An export to Excel, like yeah. a lot of the things that you can do, and you change up there under period and month. And right. Like that, how long you want it to be. And then there's an export here, um, so. Yeah, there, there's a bunch of different um, neat things to get assessment tools. My only gripe with WorldShare was that in the one kind of report that I was using, um, I think it was under WorldShare ILO alone. Yeah, the OCLC WorldShare Interlibrary Loan right there on the. Yeah, it was um, the borrower and lender resource sharing stat. Because of the way that that particular report is structured, what it would do is um, give me everything that happened in March, and then give me everything that happened as a separate report in April. I couldn't have one big report. And if something started in March and ended in April, I had it in both. Yeah. And I had to clean it out. So um, I was told by... Who's at BTS, Linda? I suddenly forgot names. But she said that there was an easier way to do that, and I think she was she and I were exchanging some emails on how. But it, it just, it's just it, it's it's a lot of really nice reports, um, especially the newer ones under the assessment tools. Um, but I haven't fully explored them, and I can put everybody in touch with uh, with uh, I believe Linda at BTS has actually explored those a lot more. And she might be a better contact for all the neat things you can do. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I was trying to look in my notebook. I don't even know where to look for that. I do think that in Tapasa there are sub reports that are not available on World Share, but I couldn't tell you right now what they would be. I don't think it, they were it made a huge big difference. No one seemed to be blown away by that, but I'll look through my notes and see if I can find out what there are, but there are a couple of items I think that we will get that are available in Tapasa that aren't, but I don't even know where to find them, so I'll, I'll look up, I'll look that up. So between what you get in terms of working, um, and I'm talking about Claire right now, coming up with how to use these reports. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pull some people to try to figure out okay. um, where some of the newer reports are and what some of the kinks are okay. um, with those reports. And I'm again, I'm, I'm working with WorldShare. It looks almost exactly like this. So I, I don't know what the big difference is, so I hope I don't misinform anybody with um, getting you details on how old WorldShare works when it's Tapasa we're worried about. But it looks like a lot of those exact same reports. That's what, uh, Question we are using right now in Iliad this function because uh, we want to keep the history for the you know of the borrower or for our patrons what they borrow for uh, this uh, so to generate a list yeah. of the and uh, so that's 
I don't know exactly if it's possible to do this. So, you know, what kind of so it's kind of different from statistics. It's generating a list of requests that match certain criteria. So requests that are the So these are like custom reports that you're creating based on the patron some are, request? Some are not a total of requests. It's listing each request yeah. and the oh. title of the patron. So that's what I don't think you can do. Yeah. yeah. But again, you know, there is by group. Okay. Um, when you do the implementation, they have what's called the Tapasa community, and you log into the Tapasa community, and all these issues are talked about among everyone in the in that community. And one of the things that they do ask that when you have things that you want to see or that you want improved or whatever, there's an enhancement page. And that all goes to the enhancement page. And then they ask everybody in the community, if that's something that you want, you need to validate that enhancement page. So the more people they say, yeah, me too, me too, I want this, the more likely that will be get push to the front of the list so that that gets worked on. So once you start with this implementation, that's a really important tool for you to use. Get involved in that community, talk to each other, and then put everything that you want until, even if they don't tell you to do it, put it on the enhancement page. And, and they promise us, and, and they keep reminding us, that's a great idea. We think it's on the enhancement page. Please go validate that. Put your name under that so that we can push that through quickly. So that's what we've been doing. Um, total loads and bars. OK, I guess we answered it. Um, any other questions? Like, is this something I didn't cover that you're interested in? We did the user portal. Can I see the uh, following requests? Like, I would like to know at the end what the, what the difficulty track I'm on when I receive a book. When I receive a book? Yes. 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 Dominique is asking the difference between the bookstraps for lending and um, borrowing. I think it's different. It, right now, the borrowing bookstrap has no due date. I think is that like isn't that the most important piece of information? It's just kind of weird. But I think the thought was that a lot of libraries don't want the due date to be what the lending library says it is. They want to maybe do it a week or so before, and that allows you that time to customize that. But you know, I, I think I've showed you in some of the forms. You can say, do you want this to go out three days before? Do you want? I mean, you can. You, they they have ways in which to to do that, so I don't understand why they don't do that. But they already know how I feel about the bookstrap. I hate the bookstrap. Um, but I'm going to look at your, your form and, and see if we can do that. Yeah. Dominique is asking about what we actually put on the book when it goes on the shelf for pickup. Um, now we print out the borrowing book strap and we do attach that to the outside of the book and we write in the name. Oh, the name is on there. Okay. 
their shots, you know, like they did four hours this way. Right. So it's, it was a duplicate of what you see on the covers. Yeah. Know, we do the same thing. Yeah. yeah. We have a separate, there's a small split that you can yeah. look because the seats sit them sideways and then you can just see all the knees. Now we make our work study students really work hard to uh, pull each one off the shelf and look at it. Well, Dominique's asking about the kind of paperwork to go with, with books that we borrow. Um, we just use the bookstrap. We don't save anything else. Everything else is we don't print out. Um, I print out in lending. I print out a bookstrap, um, a shipping label. And then my all my requests, I do, you know I keep requests for the books, and then the article ones I use to go pull all the articles, and I even do that, and I probably shouldn't, but I do print out even my electronic ones because as I'm doing that, I don't know which is like electronic and which isn't, so I pull all my article requests and then divvy it up by what's in print and what isn't, and work from there. I just find it easier to do that, and uh, you know, I'm not doing 50, 60 requests a day. I think there was a time when we did like 30 or something a day, but it's really come down in numbers, so um, I don't do that. One thing, though, in terms of printing, what I find much easier in um, Tapasa is the ability to correct. So if you've made a mistake, you can reprint. You can. It's much easier to go back and forth and fix something, at least on my end it is. Um, I found that was sometimes very kludgy to do that in Iliad. Um, sometimes you would have, to, I remember if there was a mistake, you'd have to put it all the way back at the, at the beginning of the line and work all the way through. Here you just fix it where it needs to be fixed. It's, that's much, much easier. So again, that's another thing that makes the whole workflow faster. And it's easier to make mistakes and fix them. The only thing they can improve on that is to give us a history so we know where the mistake happened. And right now you can do that in Iliad and you can't do that here. But everybody's mad about that. They all want that back. So that would be nice. So I'm not sure a regular world share people will have that once they would get that. Um, but And I do think that there are things um, missing in world share that people don't know are missing because I didn't use Iliad before, you know what I mean? So um, I think that was something that they were really shocked about. They really didn't understand why we were all so upset about losing the history. They just totally didn't get that. But it's a big deal if you're used to using that. Yeah, I think it's because world share actually um, really inhibits a lot of the data that you can save on your patrons. Um, in the last meeting I mentioned I have to get creative with how I can you know, keep even just the UPS number in there. Um, and so I've been putting it in like, I, I had to call to figure out which fields evaporate in a, in a record after the after it's closed. Um, so I know I can keep patient data, I get it, but things like just, you know, it was it was it faculty, was it grad students, yeah, uh, that's kind of data we're looking for, and we also I wanted somewhere to keep my shipping label information, so I didn't have like 99. Cities. See, and they're making us think it's us to our Iliad people that are being a pain in the neck about this, yeah. but it's true though. It's it's without a like once something closes, once a request closes, you cannot go back. And, and it can close because somebody canceled it. So if there's a further question, you can't go back in, you know, here, where am I? You can't go here and put, I don't even know why they have it, a patron name there, well, and, and look up close requests. It won't come, it won't do it. It's gone. And so, so that's gone. Then the patron who had a problem with the one that's canceled, doesn't have the ILL number, or I mean, doesn't have, well, they have an ILL number. They don't have a citation, 
to help us figure out which one is missing. So that's just becoming a pain in the neck. So one of the things that we're going to do is if I, on my um, library webpage is say, any problems, please give us your ILL number because I can search your ILL number. But that's just something that's going to be a learning curve for them is for now, we'll always need that number because that's the only thing that'll stick. Is there an, in Iliad, is there an option to print a borrowing loan slip for the patron to sign at pickup? Is this available in Tapasa? Print a borrowing loan slip. Okay, so I didn't do that in Iliad, so. Oh, that's what you, okay, Dominique says that's what she does. Okay, so the answer is yes, and Dominique at Arsinus does that. Oh, she doesn't know if it's in Tapasa. Um, I don't know. Could you print out two slips? Huh? I mean, that's the one thing. In Tapasa, you can print. You can print and print and print. I mean, you can print the same thing again and again if that's what you wanted to do. And, and I don't think you could do that in Iliad as easily. So if you wanted to duplicate a slip and use one as a signing, you know, signature slip, I suppose you could do that. Uh, no, I don't think there's anything specific to do that. But tell them that that's what you want. I mean, the one thing that they do really, really well is forms. So it's just somebody needs to create the template for that form. And it's it looks, I mean, that seems like the best thing about WorldShare. Does that answer your question? Who answered? Yes. Are you good, Joyce? OK, good. Any other questions? Yes. Um, so from the patron end, um, can they clone the requests like they used to be able to do in Iliad? <sighs> Maybe just like make a copy of that? You know, I think, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I think that's a current issue okay. that they're working on. Because, yeah, they do that a lot of the, a lot of the faculty, when they forget to you know, get it within 30 days, they, I say, just clone it, and I'll send it out again. Uh, now, see, you're asking for the if the patron can clone it. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, can the patron clone the re their request? And I don't I don't know the answer. I don't think right now. I've never s seen that in Depasa. I've never seen a discussion about that at all. So I don't I don't remember any of the slides and training concerning that. Um, but again, that was my training was back in the early fall, and who knows where they are at this point, but I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. I know from the librarian's end, you can clone a request through WorldShare, so I would assume the same ability is there in Tapasa. Well, I... Claire saying you can clone a request in WorldShare, but I think that's where I'm hearing some talk about that that may not be working quite as well as it should right now. But again, that might have been a week or so. It might be resolved. Um, would you mind demonstrating how the patron submits a request? OK. Um, So the patron can create a request if they're not already in the databases where it's being uploaded. So they're going to manually create a request. I created the form that they're using, so you can have many more fields than what I have. Um, but this is their form, and they just fill that out as we require them to, and then they submit that. So they do that for... Um, in, in our library, they do it for an article, for a book, and for a book chapter. We're th we were thinking about dissertations, but we decided most people would know that's a book. 
So we're going to leave it at that. If they search databases, is there some sort of pre-fill, like, you know, it says interlibrary loan request, can we click that? Yes, so if they're in the databases that, that are linked, with a, that have an open URL in it, it, and it's not full text in the database, it'll say interlibrary loan. They click on that, and it'll take them to this page. No, it'll take them, it'll take them to this page, but this will all be filled in. Everything will be filled in, and then all they have to do is submit. And then for books and book chapters, especially book chapters, they probably have to you know, manually fill that in. But yeah. yeah to so make changes and customize the web forms. I think that the web forms, I think customizing and making changes in the forms in WorldShare to PASA are unbelievably easy compared to what they were in Iliad. So, um, let's see, where was I when we did that? World share configure. Uh, show you that again. So any of these patron requests for, oh. All right, well, maybe I can't show you. The answer is yes, they're very easy to do. We have Iliad link in WorldCat that links out to Iliad. Will that work with Tapasa and fill out the form automatically in WorldCat? I, hmm. We didn't do that in Iliad. Um, has everybody had that function? Yeah, in WorldCat? In the World Cat, yeah, we didn't do that, so I, I don't know, but um, yeah, our st our student our patrons don't use World Cat. I mean, we have it listed in our databases, but they don't. I don't think that's a place where they go. So I'm not sh I'm not sure if it populates. Okay. Okay. We are not sure it's possible. I think I think you're right. I think because it's also an OCLC product, I think that um, I, I think it probably is. I like I said, we our patrons, we don't guide our patrons to WorldCat all that often, so I don't think I've seen it. But I'll test it when I get back. I would imagine that it would work. Now, it could also be, if it doesn't work, it could be because our serials person didn't put that open URL into the WorldCat administrative portion. They did that with everything else. So I didn't tell them where to put it and where not to put that. So if it's not there, my first thing would say, go put it there, and then hopefully it would. So I, I think it probably will work without any problem. Is that Susan? Yeah. Anybody else? Is there anything else you want me to find out for you? So, so here's what I think we'll do is, is oh, okay. Um, when you guys get moving and when you start doing this, you know, we could we could do this again. Uh, we could collect questions and you could certainly in the middle of it call me anytime and say, what did you do? I don't know that I'll be, I'm like, I'm even finding as I'm doing this right now how many things I've already forgotten about the actual building stage. I mean, I don't really remember, but I do have this huge notebook of all my stuff. So, um, but I, you know, I'm here if that's what you want, but really and truly OCLC will be there too. Okay, the advantages and disadvantages. So, okay, really fast. In terms of the administration of um, TAPASA, um, the forms are great, much easier. 
um, access is not limited to your Windows unit anymore. It's completely cloud-based. You can do it from the CERC desk. You can do it from the reference desk. You can do it from anywhere. It's not. Um, I think you can do it from your phone, actually. In fact, I think you can. Um, no routing. I hated the routing rules in, in Iliad, where things go if you want them to circumvent other things. There's nothing like that here. Um, that's the advantages in the administrative. The disadvantages right now are all temporary. I think they'll get fixed. Has to do, you know, things like the um, automatic notifications for articles sent by Iliad libraries don't go through um, in the patron file. The patrons can't see the complete citation. Um, and I hate that nine-digit number, but I'm used to it by now. Borrowing, much better maneuverability, much faster. Uh, we no longer need new, um, bring in new accounts. Um, we don't have to authenticate them manually. Everything gets done. Um, no forwarding of Odyssey articles anymore, just mark received. And I, I think that people really like text. So if you, if you are libraries that aren't using text messages for your students, they really, really like that. So that works pretty well. Um, minuses. That patron name search, a big pain in the neck. No history. Um, the due date, again, I think the patron name is not going to change. The history will change. Um, the due date does not populate on the bookstraps. I think that will change. Um, and the cancellations will definitely be fixed. They will do that. Um, lending advantages, again, maneuverability. Um,